Have you ever wanted to install Arch Linux because people on the internet keep making fun of you for using Ubuntu? Well, you may have heard of an easy way to install Arch called Arch Install, which is a simple install script in order to help you install Arch Linux instead of the cumbersome process of doing it manually. And when I hear this discussed, I mostly hear about how great this is for new users. But in this video, I'm actually going to gatekeep Arch Linux and explain why this is probably a bad thing for most new users. I'm not trying to be an elitist and be like, back in my day, we had to install Arch Linux the manual way. You kids are installing Arch Linux too easily. Although I guess you're welcome to believe that if you wish. But the reason why I recommend doing it manually is because I kind of see the installation process of Arch Linux as kind of like the tutorial. So I think you should complete the tutorial first off to learn how to play the game and second to see if you even like the game. Because I actually don't think that Arch is for everyone and I think you have to be a little bit special in order to enjoy using Arch Linux. And so in this video I'm just going to explain why I recommend doing it manually and this will also be a video I guess about why I don't really recommend some of these Arch based distributions like Endeavor OS is a popular one right now, Manjaro, because all the time in my comment section I get questions like which Arch based distribution do you recommend? I don't really recommend using any of them, just vanilla Arch. And finally one more disclaimer before I start. I feel like the installation script is more for Arch veterans who have installed Arch a couple of times and just want a quicker way to do it. So I'm not completely bashing the idea of using the Arch install script. I think it is very useful and there's nothing really wrong with using it. I just think that the experience of installing it yourself is something that everybody should experience if you are new to Arch Linux. And well, let me just explain why. So Arch Linux is a distribution where you have complete control over your system and with great power comes great responsibility. I think somebody said that before. But what that means in the world of Arch is that you are expected to do most things yourself and troubleshoot whenever things go wrong. And so the Arch installation process is not particularly difficult, but it's kind of more of an introduction to how life will be on Arch Linux. And so think of it like the tutorial, as I've said, because in Arch Linux you are expected to be able to fix things by going into the system files. You're expected to problem solve things yourself by reading the manual or reading the wiki and learning how to do things yourself. I think most commonly you probably hear Arch Linux referred to as a do-it-yourself distro. And that is kind of the attitude that you need to have in Arch Linux. And if you skip the manual installation process, then in my opinion, you are missing out on valuable information. Because what does installing Arch Linux teach you? Well, first off, installing Arch isn't going to make you a Linux expert. That's kind of what I thought whenever I first installed Arch for the first time. I thought that I was going to go from a Linux noob to a Linux wizard just by installing Arch. But the installation process does teach you some important skills. I think one important thing that it teaches you is kind of how everything in your system works together. So maybe a new user to Linux, like say a Ubuntu user, would just think of their desktop environment. Like if they're using GNOME, then they would just kind of imagine this as just their entire system and not really think about their system the way it actually is set up. But if you install Arch Linux, then you're kind of going to have a better idea of how all the system components work together. I think you're going to have more of a higher level view of everything. Like you'll understand that Xorg handles the display, the desktop environment handles the desktop and the default apps. You'll understand that Alsa and Pulse Audio handle the audio. You'll understand that the bootloader is needed in order to load the kernel. And you'll learn useful skills that you'll use again like partitioning drives, mounting drives, working with systemd. These are things that you'll use a lot whenever you're running Arch Linux. But probably even more so than all of this, I think the most important part is the do-it-yourself mindset that it gets you into. And it's a different mindset to someone who's using something like Ubuntu. The first thing you probably do if something breaks in Ubuntu is just go to Ask Ubuntu or some support forum like that. But in Arch Linux, probably the first thing I do whenever something's going wrong is just check my journal or check my system logs in order to see what the error actually is and see if I can take it from there. I'm not saying that I'm so much smarter than Ubuntu users, but that's kind of the attitude that Arch Linux gets you into. I think it teaches you to be a little bit more independent. Because when things inevitably break in Arch Linux, 
Installing Arch is actually really easy compared to having to fix some things. And if you don't install Arch Linux manually, then you might not have an understanding when things break, what exactly is going wrong. Not only that, but these Arch Linux install scripts are notorious for not always working correctly. And when something goes wrong with the install script, instead of being able to fix it or troubleshoot what's going wrong, it's more of a black box where you don't really have any idea what's going on. And I guess my origin story, I guess this is the reason I'm making this video, but whenever I first installed Arch, I actually used an Arch Linux install script. Not the one that's popular now, but there have been different installation scripts that have come and gone. But the one I used, I must have tried for hours trying to get this thing to work. And so I would install my system using this install script and something would just inevitably break and I would have to wipe my system and start over again. And I did this, I don't know how many times, a whole bunch of times. But what really ended up working in the end was just putting away the installer and just doing it the quote unquote hard way of doing it manually. That's the only time when it actually worked. And was it a little bit more difficult than using an installer script? Did I have to learn more? I mean, yes, but now I actually understood what I was doing instead of just clicking next in an installer. And by the way, it's really not that difficult to install Arch. I have a whole nother video on this, but people treat this like it's the final boss of Linux and people hype up how scary and difficult it is, but it's really not that difficult. All you have to do is follow instructions from the Arch Wiki, or you can watch a YouTube video and follow along. Not that I recommend just blindly following along and like copy and pasting commands into your terminal and just hoping that everything works out. You should still have an open mind and do some research as you were doing this process in order to gain a better understanding. And so if you run some command and you completely don't have an understanding of what it does, then I would do some research. I mean, that is what the Arch Wiki is for. And you'll have to troubleshoot a few things during the installation process when it turns out that your computer is a little bit different. But that's really it. It's not rocket science. But I think it's difficult enough. You'll probably run into at least a couple of small hiccups and have to troubleshoot some things. But I think that's part of the fun of Arch Linux, if you can call that fun in kind of a weird masochistic way. But if you can get through that and you don't mind the process of figuring things out by yourself, then you'll probably like working in Arch. Because like I said before, Arch isn't for everyone. If you don't want to have to do it yourself for a lot of things, if you don't like figuring things out and solving your own problems, and if you don't want to have to do a lot of configuration and maintenance of the system yourself, even have to do some repetitive and boring tasks sometimes. So you have to be okay with being responsible for the security and stability of your own system. And so whenever you do the manual installation process, it kind of gives you a taste of what running Arch Linux on a day to day basis is like, because if you break something, then you're going to have to do the process of figuring out what happened. So I think the manual installation process is also kind of a way to screen if Arch Linux is right for you. If that process just sounds totally unappealing to you, it might not be for you and that's okay. There's plenty of other great Linux distributions out there. I also don't really recommend easy Arch distros like Endeavor OS, Manjaro, and what these are, basically they're popular Arch based distributions that are essentially Arch Linux with a graphical installer and a desktop environment out of the box. So in theory, it should be easier to set up than Arch Linux. And one of the problems with these is that a lot of these distros simply stopped being maintained. So five years ago, probably the Arch based distribution that everybody would have recommended was Antegros. And it just doesn't exist anymore. It just stopped being maintained. And even these Arch install scripts, they're not around forever because there have been Arch install scripts in the past that have come and gone. Maybe the maintainer loses interest and he no longer wants to maintain the project. So they may just disappear, but manually installing it will always be there. And these Arch based distributions are definitely cool, but they have the same problem in that once you install it and you run through the graphical installer, you don't really have an understanding of your system and it is basically just Arch under the coat of paint. And so you're still going to have to troubleshoot things and fix things as you would with any other Arch based system. And so that's why I don't necessarily recommend them. I would just recommend if you're interested in Arch, just give Arch a try. And if you're really scared, 
do it in a VM first. I didn't because I'm kind of dumb and I just jumped in head first and learned how to do it on my computer, which probably isn't the best way to do it, but you can do that if you want to. So maybe be smarter than me, but if you want to go for it, just go for it and install it the manual way. You'll find out that it's really not as scary as it sounds.